Joaquin Dotson is a commitment out of Collierville High School, which is Collierville, for those who don't know, is just outside of Memphis. He is the son of Damian Dotson. I don't know if you remember him, Dave. He played for the Tigers in the late 90s, um, was on the Memphis team that beat Tennessee in 96, and then was on the two Memphis teams that almost beat Tennessee in 99 and 2000. Um, well, Tennessee uh, Tennessee didn't get beat by Memphis in 96. They got beat by the rest. The, uh, the they did. They did. That's the worst call ever. Yes. Yeah. And it won an SB somehow, which it shouldn't have. But yeah, they right. still. But to be fair, again, um, Peyton Manning should have played a lot better than he did that game. I mean, Peyton Manning's the number one draft pick. You shouldn't be losing to a four and seven mid-major team and only scoring 17 points. Don't um, get sidetracked, Caleb. Uh, let's but, talk about uh, okay. Joaquin Dotson. He so is this a is... 178 pound receiver from the football mecca known as Collierville, Tennessee. Yes, Collierville is a suburb outside of Memphis. It's, um, I think for Josh Heupel, uh, this is much more about, I'm just going to be honest. I, 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 give, I give you guys my full objectivity. I don't pretend if a player is a good pickup or not. I don't think this is a pickup to for to have an impact on Tennessee football long term. I think this is solely about Josh Heupel establishing a pipeline and keeping one in Memphis, particularly if Jerry Mack goes, who is, as you talked about over the weekend, Dave, in an article you wrote, um, Tennessee can can deal without Jerry Mack, but they they that they do lose that Memphis pipeline if Jerry Mack is gone. And so I think for for Josh Heupel, this is just to make sure he can get those this is to make sure still the Amari Thomases can still he can get, still get them. And okay, so I d he doesn't have offers from elite players or elite colleges, but this is so early. We're talking about Virginia, Arkansas, probably his best offer. So I'm not willing to go with you and that he's not an elite player. I think you could add a star. Uh, he, he's not real tall. He's six foot, 178 pounds. So you're probably right, but I do think this is a little bit early in the process to just kind of say this is a, a throwaway or a connection type of guy, but it's probably not the guy you would offer this early if you didn't have the transfer portal and couldn't get out of it after a year. Right. That's, that's probably true. You're right. Um, and that's where that's, that's probably the big thing with this is that it's, it's, it, it, it at least establishes some sort of rapport. Again, son of a very, prominent memphis tiger football player too which helps the pipeline maybe and look you're right he's so young damian dotson for those who don't remember um could have gone a lot of places and chose to stay home that was a really dumb decision by him looking back he should have gone elsewhere um he hurt his own nfl career or not you know by staying home and going to memphis but uh i i think that i think the big thing that the, the reason that's a big deal to me is that you could maybe see he has a little bit more understanding of the game. Being Look, we see this a lot with players, um, particularly young players. A lot of freshmen who may not be great if they're the son of football players, they are, they're a little more ready to go as freshmen and sophomores. Now, they don't develop that much. They don't get that much better. But you see that a lot, Dave, right? Where you see a freshman who, because he, I mean, the most high-profile case is Michael Munoz, who was ready to go as a freshman, but didn't hit, you know, his ceiling wasn't that high when he became a senior. And... Honestly, by the time it was a senior, I thought Aaron Sears was better than him. You see that a lot with other players. And... I'm not, I think you're right, but I'm not going to sell him short like that yet. I want to do some more research, and I've uh, actually talking with a uh, college assistant today, so should be able to get some insight into him. So maybe he's a guy who is just starting to climb up the recruiting rankings. Maybe he's just a three-star, and that's the best he's ever going to be. But Travis Post called Trooper Taylor. All right, so let's take a look at Tennessee's uh, recruiting and where they stand right now. And again, we're moving ahead of the 2025 cl classes, as uh, Bill Belichick would say, on to 2025. Uh, so right now it's led by George McIntyre. Tennessee has six commitments. Jack Van Dorsalaire, did I pronounce that correctly, the tight end? I think I did. Uh, I yes, I believe you did. Tyler Redman out of Georgia. By the way, Jack Van is out of Texas. Uh, he's a cornerback. Uh, Jack Van, the tight end, is a four-star. The rest of these guys are going to be three-stars. I'm going to throw at you. Justin Baker, running back, Buford, Georgia. Dylan Lewis, cornerback, Milton, Alpharetta, Georgia. And Joachim Dotson, who we just met, uh, mentioned Joachim Dotson out of Collierville, Tennessee. So Tennessee's ranked right now very early. Doesn't matter. 2025 class is um 
is 10. Number 10. Yeah. So, so good, bad, way too early to even look at that. Way uh, too early sure to tell. Yeah. Be sure and take a look at our Patreon page. If you want to be a part of some insider recruiting information that we're going to begin, at, begin adding this week. And we'll have a drawing later for our last week's weekly prize. And then at the end of the month, we'll draw for a uh, Hendon Hooker mini helmet. <laughs>